Salut! Din cauza evenimentelor care au loc la nivel mondial, am evitat să mai publicăm episoade noi cu accent. Acum câteva zile, împreună cu un grup de prieteni, am fost voluntari la Vama Siget. Acolo am cunoscut o mulțime de oameni curajoși, cu istorii emoționante care ne-au mărcat profund. De ce am decis să facem o ediție specială, în care oamenii ne vor povesti experiențele prin care au trecut? Acest interviu nu este despre hype, politică, cine e vinovat, conspirații, oculta mondială sau despre supraputeri care își măsoară egourile. Acest interviu este despre oamenii simpli din Ucraina care pentru a supraviețui au lăsat în spate tot ce au agonisit o viață. Mai grav de atât, unii dintre ei au fost nevoiți să plece fără soți, fii, tați, rude, prieteni care nu au avut posibilitatea să părăsească Ucraina. Acest video are trei scopuri. Primul este cel de a prezenta adevărul așa cum este el. În presă vedem o mulțime de informații care se bat cap în cap și devine din ce în ce mai greu să ne dăm seama care este adevărul. Noi credem că istoriile oamenilor care au trecut și au trăit acele sentimente sunt cel mai clar și cel mai evident adevăr pe care îl putem obține. Al doilea scop al acestui video este să implicăm cât mai mulți antreprenori în ajutoarele oferite refugiaților. Cea mai mare parte a audienței noastre sunt oameni de afaceri, de aceea încercăm să obținem cât mai multe ajutoare sub formă de cazări gratuite, mese calde sau oricare alte ajutare disponibile. Al treilea, dar nu cel din urmă scop al acestor interviuri, este susținerea campaniei începute de cei de la Asociația Medical International Rescue, care gestionează spațiile de cazare, mâncare și alte ajutoare pentru refugiații din Cluj-Napoca. În descrierea acestui video poți găsi informații detaliate despre cum poți ajuta oamenii din Ucraina cu voluntariat, donații sau ajutoare financiare, indiferent din ce colț al lumii te afli. Răscăjite как проходил первый день и как вы вообще узнали о войне? Как сказать, ну, мы через, ну, как через новостей, uh -huh. когда мы смотрели, ну, как и новости, э, мы поняли, что война, мы поняли, что война уже Россию, ну, как уже подписали, что они признают э, Донекс, ну, вот это Донбасс, они признают Донбасс и и они уже их войска, ну как в Донбасс. Первый, когда, когда они уже вош, ну, воехали, ну, вошли в Донбасс, мы поняли, что ну как уже серьезно. И они начинали ну как ну, стрелять. Да, мы хотели ну как ну утро, мы хотели дети ну как детей ну как в садик, да. И нам позвонил ну, директор садик, сразу сказала, что ну не надо ну как потому что уже стреляют, да, стреляют, поэтому уже военный стан, да, и поэтому, ну, так мы узнавали, ну, как, ну, про войну, и... А из какой в области Украины? А, окей, мы живем, ну, мы живем, э, можно брать, в общем, 70 километров от границы с Россией. А, вы очень близко, то есть, к да. России? Ну, да. Из России. И как вы добирались до, до сюда? Да, мы э, очень, ну как, мы там в северный, ну как в северный, Су, да, Сумской область, uh -huh. Сумской область, ну это ну, северный... Э, Я понял, в, север, в северной части. Да, в северной части Украины, да, ближе к России. Да, поэтому мы оттуда с машины. Мы сели в машине, и мы все укры, потому что уже блокпост, уже бомбировали, ну как, mm -hmm. и поэтому мы объезжали всю Украину, ну как, ну, пять, ну, четыре дня четыре ехали, дня ехали. Да, да, четыре дня, ну, можно даже сказать, пять, да. на пятый сюда, ну как, на, да, на захид на Украину. Вы проехали сразу из Украины в Румынию или проходили еще какие-то другие страны, там, Молдова? Не, и... не только... Сразу из Солодвина и Да, через Солодвин. Да. Я понял. Какие у вас планы на, на будущее? Что вы хотите сделать дальше? Ой, мы все оставили. 
Мы только закончили строить свой дом. Новый дом мы зашли туда, ну, как 1 декабря прошлого года. Мы зашли, и мы, мы все, ну, как, ну, все свои, ну, как уклали, чтобы строить новый дом. Да, да. И теперь, ну, как, мы вообще не знаем, что, что делать. Да, остались без, ну, как, без ничего. Мы приехали. Ну, я думаю, что только Бог, да, только Бог знает, что нам дальше, ну, как и ждет. Mm -hmm. да. А как вас э, приняли здесь? И как, э, да. Думаете, люди, ну, они стали вам помогать или было, было сложно вначале? Как было вот... Э, как бы очень, потом... очень, очень хорошо люди нас приняли, да. И очень сочу... ну, люди сочувствовали, да, сочувствовали. И, ну, они очень хорошо, но ну, как мне очень, ну, как нас, ну, нам очень приятно, больше, как люди сочувствуют, ну, как переж... помогают, а хотят, ну, как помогать и помогают. И нам очень приятно. И поэтому пусть Господь, ну, как пусть Бог их благословит, да, благословит. Как вы думаете, вы сможете вернуться в Украину? Ну, конечно, потому что наши родители, жены, они еще там, где, ну, они еще там в Украине. И даже сейчас нету связи. И мы не знаем, что там, да. да. Мы не знаем, что там. И просто он не, не хотел, ну, как уходить. уходить, уезжать, да. Не хотел. Поэтому он остался там и женой. Ну, с женой. И сейчас... Даже с утром сегодня бомбировали там, да. Ну, и сейчас нету связи. Mm -hmm. Ну, и... Ну, наше желание, конечно, если будет возможность вернуться, если все будет хорошо, конечно, потому что у нас все там есть. Mm -hmm. Дом, все есть, и все. И напоследок, что бы вы хотели сказать вот всем людям? Что сказать людям? Мы просто, ну, как мы понимаем, что, ну, как... Сейчас это такое время, ну, э, да, чтобы люди, ну как, э, потому что ни, никто, сейчас, ну как, когда мы смотрим, мы понимаем, что никто не мог, ну как, остановиться, ну, война. Потому что, когда мы смотрим, люди, ну, даже смотрим России, они, ну, готовы, ну, и, ну, просто люди должны больше, ну как, уповать на Бога, да, больше уповать на Бога. И я думаю, что это только Бог мог ну, дать последнее слово. Да. Я понял. Ну, в общем, спасибо вам большое. Мы вам тоже благодарим. Да, вам тоже спасибо. Я за что и надеюсь, что вы сможете вернуться назад в ваш дом. Мы тоже на так надеем. Дай, дай Бог, да, чтобы, все, чтобы все было хорошо. Tell us about the first day and uh, when did you knew that uh, it started? Uh, okay, so first of all, we, we didn't know when it's going to start. So I was sleeping in my, on my bed and uh, my roommate woke me up. I was like, they have started invading Ukraine. Russians have started invading Ukraine. I was like, how? We didn't get any news, nothing, no information. And then Suddenly I woke up and I had to take a shower like quickly. I had to dress up. I didn't pack any of my belongings. And I ran to the metro, to the metro. We went to the bunker, went to the bunker to go and stay there. So we were there and we we're hearing like bomb sounds. Um, they were throwing the missiles and it was so scary under there. So we had to sleep there for the night, for the whole day. And um, the next morning, we're about going back to our apartment because it's, it's like 10 minutes from the bunker to the apartment. So on our way to the, to the apartment, uh, we saw like the strike on the air and the sound, which was, so, which was so hard. And then we're looking for somewhere to hide, but we couldn't. So we had to run, run back to our apartments. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we stayed there for some time. Then the news came up that we have to, uh, we have to get, and uh, we have to get like somewhere to stay, so as to enable us be safe. But 
to no avail. And uh, we were there when we the uh, apartment, they had to do a coffee and they said that we, we can't leave anywhere, we can't go anywhere. And we're so scared upstairs because we don't know when the Russians are going to strike. And uh, due to the fact that we've had the bomb sound, so it was kind of traumatic for us. Uh, we were not able to sit at a place. We we're just walking around, uh, fearful of the next thing the Russians are going to do. And um, yeah, we, we, we st sat down in our homes. We couldn't sleep the nights. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, we saw the next day. And the next day, we had to travel from where we stay. Uh, where so did stay. you stay? Where, uh, what part of Ukraine? Uh, yeah, I, st I stay in Kharkiv. Mm -hmm. I stay in Kharkiv. So um, I had to travel from Kharkiv to uh, Lviv, which was the other side of Ukraine, the safer side of Ukraine. Uh, because we saw that the Kharkiv, um, the Kharkiv area was being penetrated and uh, the military the militaries were like invading the Kharkiv city so we had to leave Kharkiv so we arrived at the train station in the morning we left in the morning we arrived there in the morning and when we were at the train station we had to wait for the train unfortunately the train wasn't coming so we had to wait till night time so we we're there in the morning by nine and then we had to wait till like nine in the night nine and p.m you stayed all the day in the train station in the right? train station yes yeah, standing waiting for the train and so on and um, without our belongings we didn't have like boxes we didn't have anything with us we just had like a school bag and we waited for the train and the train came in and when the train came in a lot of people wanted to enter the train and it was kind of very difficult to enter because people were pushing pushing people away trying to make way for themselves to enter inside and we ended up entering but the unfortunate thing was that when we entered we couldn't sit down there was no space to sit so we had to stand all through and the uh, how long did the trip uh, The trip last? from Hakiv to Livy was about 22 hours. So we had to stand for 22 hours in the train. It was so strenuous. It was it was so bad. We, we were no able to it, it was just it was disastrous. We didn't know what to do. So we had to stay in the train for the 22 you, hours. You stayed the whole day in the station and then another and then day entered another in day in the in the train and uh, yeah and sometimes in the train we're also hearing like sounds so the train has to stop um, at some point to make sure like the coast is clear for it to continue mm -hmm. and we're also ha hearing like sounds of missiles guns and so on even when the train was passing and it was kind of scary so they had to off the lights in the train so uh, so that the russians would not know that the train is passing so they had to off the lights and uh, yeah, we got to Lviv. Um, when we got to Lviv, we had to spend the night there because we arrived there late in the night. We had to stay there. We have to spend the nights. We spent the nights there. And um, were and you then, held in the, in the Lviv or uh, do you just uh, do everything on yourself? Uh, yes, we did everything by ourselves in Lviv. Because um, when we reached uh, Lviv, there were a lot of people there. Uh, uh, it being the first time I was there, I, we were kind of confused uh, at first. And we managed to find our way to get the ticket. Uh, we got a ticket for uh, Uzgorod. Uzgorod was, is the next stop for us to come to Romania. So uh, we got a ticket for Uzgorod. But then unfortunately the ticket that we got for Uzgorod, like it delayed so the train didn't come at that time so we had to wait for the train to come and we waited again for another like 15 hours or so we waited for the train to come and then when the train came we entered the train 
uh, to Uzgorod. Then when we reached uh, Uzgorod, we were at the airport, at the sorry, at the uh, railway station, and um, we tried to. We, that was that was when we managed to find a way to come to Romania. So we had to get like uh, a cab to enable us come to Romania to the border, so just to get to border. Uh, but even the cab that we ordered. It stopped somewhere and we had to trek down to the Sigetu border. So we trekked, we trekked for like another 45 minutes to the Sigetu border. And then when we reached the Sigetu border, the uh, officials were so friendly. Uh, they received us with open arms, um, gave us um, an accommodation for us to stay, gave us free food. And since then, we've been trying to. Um, know the next the next way forward because we are students and i have a friend of mine that is a 60 year medical student in hakim uh, national medical university and he has only like three months to finish his studies but due to the current situation uh he he won't uh, be able to yeah he won't be able to so uh this is the problem that we are facing right now so we are trying to see if um there is going to be any assistance that we could get so that we could mm -hmm. be able to finish our medical our medical university or our medical school yeah so that's the that's the plan we're having right now so it's been it's been a hell of a ride we stayed we left haki for like three or four days before getting to romania because the it was a strenuous journey so yeah that's that has been the ride since on which date did you left the Kharkiv? Uh, we left Kharkiv uh, 28? Uh, I think 28. It's like the third or the fourth day so, of the... No, not 28. I think 26th or so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When it started. Immediately when we started. 26th. And um, we left. But the whole invasion started 24th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went. We were staying in Haki for like two days. We we're staying on the in the bunker, lying on the ground, mm -hmm. and so on. We we're not. We, uh, we we're not able to eat. No water. No food. Um, we we're hungry and so on. So we left twenty uh, sixth. Um, and we arrived here first. First. First of March in the morning. We arrived here. Um, I think we arrived here like two a.m. or so. Mm -hmm. Here. Uh, and we got to the Sigetu border and um, someone, uh, a humanitarian, brought us to the hotel where we are staying like currently. So, and I'm so happy that the, uh, that Romanians were able to help us, uh, give us accommodation and food for us to, for us to stay here and figure out the next step in our life. So. Uh, what are your plans for the future and, and what are you going to do? Do you think about um, getting back into Ukraine or do you go somewhere else? Uh, with the situation of things right now, sorry, um, I think that right now the Ukraine, Ukraine right now, especially the Kharkiv city, they bombed down a university, uh, a medical university close to my school. So I feel that it's going to take a long time before um, they will get back to their feet. So what uh, my plans are is to get into a medical university, uh, maybe here or uh, anywhere else, and try as much as I can to complete it. And um, yeah, that's, that's the plan right now. That's the plan, to complete my medical university. Because this is this is this is a tragic event, and um, it's been it's been very bad. It's it has given us like a lot of things to think about. So yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, thank you very much for the interview, and I uh, hope that you will be uh, able to get back to Ukraine and to finish your school. Povestiți ne despre prima zi și cum ați aflat în general că se întâmplă și ce, ce se întâmplă. Ce, ce putem să vă povestesc? Suntem de la Ucraina, de la Odessa. 
A doilea zi de război, când am văzut că se aude tare rău, am reușit să plecăm la Moldova, unde e mai liniștit. Și am strâns copilașii micuți, nepoței și ne-am pornit la Moldova. Am auzit că la Odessa dăm în pușcă, tancurile. Mi-a fost frică de nepoței, de copilaș. Și ne-am pornit la Moldova când am ajuns, am ajuns la orașul Cimișlia. Ne-a primit primarul foarte frumos. De la Cimișlia ne-a dat autocar și am ajuns la România. De la România tot, mulțumesc frumos. Dar bine ne-au primit. Satul, orașul cum Cluj, orașul Cluj suntem, șapte persoane, trei copilași, patru maturi. Foarte bine ne-au primit, mulțumesc frumos. Ne locuim într-o gostiniță frumoasă, bine, curat, ne dă de mâncare. Mulțumesc frumos la toată lumea care ne ajută. Mai mult nu mai pot spune nimic. După cele auzite, fiecare își poate crea propriile concluzii. Eu doar vă reamintesc că în descrierea acestui video puteți găsi detalii despre cum puteți ajuta cu adevărat refugiații din Ucraina. Pace!